In this lesson, we'll be creating and using a difference mat to be able to make it look as if our actor's hands are on top of the interface that he's interacting with. Okay, so right now you can see that if I zoom in on this, it doesn't have really convincing depth just yet, just because our actor's hands appear to be on the underside of that interface. So instead of going in by hand and doing a traditional rotoscope, that would take really just many, many, many hours to get that perfect and we can use something instead called a difference mat that is going to really quickly be able to just give us the look that his hands are on top of everything and you're going to be shocked if you've never used a difference mat before at how great this works but there are some stipulations because you can't just learn how to do this difference mat and then use it every time and never rotoscope anything ever again so after I kind of get this together for you and show you how to create that difference mat we'll talk about why it works so well in this shot. Now, one of the reasons just right off the bat that I'll just go ahead and tell you now is that we have huge contrast between our subject's hands and the table. If we had a white table or somebody with a lot darker skin, this would not be as possible because the difference map recognizes the difference in the pixels. So, what we have to do is find basically what is a blank plate. So, if we just go backwards a little bit here we have a part in our footage where our actor's hands are both in his lap so he is not actually interacting with anything and we're able to use that moment in time as our difference mat so we're just gonna go forward a little bit here and it's just right around this moment in time just right about there. So you see that both of his hands are in his lap right there. And this is what we're going to use as our difference map because we have a totally blank slate as our table. Our phone is there and our actor's hands are not interacting with any of that interface. So what we need to do is save this out as some kind of a file that we can bring back in just as a still shot. So I'm going to just e export this frame as a PSD. So with your current time indicator right here and make sure you have this setting set to full resolution because it's going to default to your current settings so if you exported it and you had a quarter resolution when you brought it back in it would be way too small so one other thing we need to do beforehand is fix this phone footage layer because right now what it's looking at is a scaled down 70% piece of footage to be able to take this shot. And we can just turn the interface off for now because we're just only focusing on the footage. So this is scaled down to 70%. We want it to look like it's 100%. So to make it look like it's 100% but still keep the same scale, we need to pre-compose our footage. So go ahead and select your footage, hit Control shift c to pre-compose. We'll change this to move all attributes into the new composition, and we can just call this phone footage main. Then go ahead and say OK. And now if I hit the scale key or just hit S to bring scale up, that's going to say 100%. So that's perfect. That's just what we want it to be. Now, And you notice that that didn't change at all either. So now with our current time indicator just right here on frame 286, let's come up here to Composition and choose Save Frame as File. And that's going to put it in our render queue for us. And we'll just come over here to where it says Output To. And we can save it right here inside of our project files in the reference files in the graphics folder. And I'm going to call this difference mat. And we'll go ahead and save that. And that's just going to export it as a Photoshop document. So that's fine. We'll just go ahead and hit render. And you can see it's only one frame. So really quickly it just went ahead and did that. Now let's go ahead and import that. So go ahead and hit, go to import file and choose difference mat, go ahead and open it up. And we don't need to worry about any of those alpha um, settings, just set that to ignore, and then go ahead and say OK. And then we'll come over here to our main integrated comp where all of our pieces are sitting, and we'll grab that difference mat layer, and let's just drop this at the bottom of everything. Now, if I did put it on top, 
you would see that there was no change because it's just basically a freeze frame of what we're seeing here. And it has exactly the same amount of data. It's not been compressed at all. So we'll go ahead now and let's open up our effects and presets panel to get that difference mat effect. So come up here to window, choose effects and presets, and we'll just type in difference and there it is right there. Now we want to add this difference mat to our footage. So come down here, drag it onto the footage layer. And I'm just going to put this on top of that interface layer so that the difference will be in between here, which is where you see that. So we'll go ahead and turn that on. And then let's just go to a, a frame where his hands are on top of everything. And right now, we are only seeing that frozen frame still. So go ahead, come up here to your interface and we need to choose what difference layer we want to be using. So right now it's using itself and so that's why nothing is moving as we scrub. So we need to come down here and choose difference mat as that layer. So you see that he moved a little bit. We were able to see that footage changing and now it appears that his hand is on top of everything. Now this was incredibly fast and if we just kind of scrub through the rest of our footage you'll be able to see that we've got just this great um, look here where his hand looks really like it's on top of everything every time he brings his hand onto this interface it's covered up so one problem we are having though is this kind of strange haloing look that we get with the difference mat at the bottom there so what we need to do is grab that phone footage layer and duplicate it and put this underneath the interface so basically we've just put that interface in between a layer that that doesn't have anything on it as far as an effect and then the affected layer is simply referencing the pixels of the difference mat to create that contrast for us. So we need to go ahead and grab that layer, hit control D to duplicate it, and then we'll just drag it underneath the interface layer and then make sure we delete the difference mat effect from that bottom layer. So you might want to take a look at my stacking order for a minute here just to see what that did and how that changed. So we've got our main uh, photo footage with the difference mat effect then we have the interface in the middle then we have the footage with no effect on it and then we just have our difference mat there at the bottom just so that our timeline can reference it and you don't even have to have that turned on you can turn the eyeball if off if you want it's still going to be able to look at the pixels and work properly so really just as this is it's already really great and you're able to um, it really looks like his hand is on top of everything but if I zoom in here we're getting just a little bit of a ragged kind of aliased edge so we can come in here and really start to fine-tune this so let's just go back over here choose that top layer and just start to kind of play with some of these settings so these um, settings right here at the top we've already got those set up the way we want we can come in and turn up that matching uh, softness a little bit and if I just bring that up just a little bit you can start to see that that's softening out and just looking a little bit better now you don't want to go overboard because if I turn that just way way up then his fingers kind of start to disappear and I can see through him so his hand starts to look a little ghostly so I'm just gonna turn this up to a 13 that's probably great right there I don't want to lose any information though so if you feel like you're losing too much you can always turn that down a little bit more um, and then we can even maybe turn down the tolerance a little bit if you wanted to and then turn up the softness. So it's just kind of a guessing game between turning up the softness and down the tolerance. So just kind of work on that until you get that looking right. And then we can also turn up that blur as well um, just a little bit and that's going to help. Now if now the aliasing you'll notice isn't quite as bad as it was before but we still have that um, slightly black halo there. So if you want to, you can come in here. I'm just going to turn this up a little bit more. And we can add a matte choker to this. So if you just type in matte, M-A-T-T-E, you'll see matte choker is right there. And that's going to help you to start to refine that matte. So we can just grab that and drop that on as a second effect. And you can see right away that really takes quite a bit off just from the top. So I'm going to turn this down quite a bit. We'll just turn this down to something a lot lower. So we're taking off a lot less. 
and maybe bring that choke down a little bit right there. So you can really start to see how those pieces interact with each other the more that you play around with those values. So I'm just going to come down in here and just kind of play with it till I get it looking right. Maybe turn this up a little bit more. And this you can see is a lot more fine tuned than playing with what we were using earlier. It, it's changing in a lot smaller increments. So it's very helpful with that. Maybe turn up that gray level softness a little bit just to kind of smooth that out. That might be just a little bit too much. Let me put this somewhere around 60. And then we can come in here, maybe turn this down a little bit. You just got to kind of play with it just to get it right. And sometimes it's, you know, too much and you need to come in, change it a little bit. And it's just, it's really nice that it happens in such small increments because then it just becomes really easy to start to refine the way that that looks. And even if you get a little bit of haloing around here, it's better to have that kind of black sort of drop shadow look than a really hard alias. So maybe just turn this number up just a little bit more right there. And I'm just being really careful not to do too much so that I start to lose any of the actual information of his hand. We'll just kind of keep dragging that up and now you can see that that is just a very small black line that we have there and I'm afraid that if I do it too much more we'll really start to lose some of his actual finger information so I'm just going to go ahead and stop there and if you need to refine it more later on you certainly can do that and let's just kind of scrub forward to a different frame here and it really looks like we're still getting quite a good bit of information. So uh, I'm happy with the way that uh, that looks. If you want to go in there and start to really try to change it up some more, really get that refined a little bit better, you absolutely can do that. But just using the difference mat and the mat choker together is a great way for you to be able to get those two um, effects and not have to go in and rotoscope everything out, save you a lot of time and um, just really by having a super high contrast in your footage like this where we have this black table and somebody with pretty pale skin we're able to get a really nice difference in those pixels so it's basically just looking at every time that that table was black whenever his hand was in his lap and saying now the table is white here so I'm going to take those pixels um, away from whatever is underneath there so that's kind of what that's doing doing and really because we have the other layer underneath that that's why we're not getting any kind of weird haloing effect so that's kind of why you get this sandwiching set up and it really helps you to um, be able to create a really nice looking difference mat without changing your settings too terribly much and one of the other just hallmarks of being able to use a difference mat is having your camera still. If our camera was not still, we would not be able to use this so effectively because it's looking at those pixels sitting there still and saying, okay, I can change just those pixels there. But if we were moving the camera around while we were shooting this, then we would have all kinds of jittery things happening all over the place because all the pixels would be changing every time the camera moved. So you have to have a static shot for that to be working as well. So just keep in mind when you want to use a difference mat, you want to have a high contrast shot and a still shot as well. Just something fixed on a tripod will work just fine.